What's going on guys, my name is Kyle and welcome back to the game department. In the last couple of weeks we've been upgrading our sim rig, we have a brand new cockpit, so without wasting any time, let's jump right into it. Now I'm sure as some of you may be able to tell from the beautiful b-roll that's just been playing in your eyeballs, this is a track racer cockpit. To be more specific, a TR-160. And before we jump too far into this video, I do want to quickly preface that while track racer didn't give me this cockpit for free, they did give us a little discount to make it a little bit easier for us to get one of these cockpits, to make some content, try it out, and just see what we think. So as I said, didn't get it for free, I had to pay out of pocket for it, and if I don't like it, you will definitely know about it. <laughs> so I've been using this rig for the last couple of weeks and I already have a list of things I love and some things that I don't like. So before we dive into our likes and dislikes, I wanna quickly explain what a TR-160 is. So Track Racer have aluminum profile cockpits, which is what this cockpit is, and they do have some tubular designs that have pre-drilled holes and allocated bolts and things like that. I wanted to go for an aluminum profile cockpit because that's my personal preference, but everyone will have an idea of what they do and don't like. Just have a bit of a look at both, weigh up your options, and make your decision from there. So if you have a look on Track Racer's website, you will see there are two different designs of aluminum profile cockpit. I use the TR160, which is that little bit more expensive, but it is definitely a lot bulkier and a lot bigger for somebody my size. It's ideal. The next one down from that is a TR80. So it's essentially the same idea. It just means that the profile's a little bit slimmer. It's not as big, which if you have a normal sized body, it would probably be very good for you. <laughs> the reason that I went for the TR160 is because I'm six foot six and about 150 kilos. So I'm pushing this cockpit to the extremes. Whereas a lot of people that are a lot smaller than myself may not necessarily need to go for the TR160, but if it is the cockpit that you decide to go for, it's gonna last you forever anyway. So when you have a look on the website, you can see that the cockpits come in different layouts. Now I went for the TR160 with the rally style seat. You can also get it with a GT style seat, same as the TR80. You can get it with the rally style or you can get it with the GT style. Now they do have different wheel mounting options. I went for the standard wheel deck because I'm currently using a Logitech G29 wheel. But if I do wanna upgrade in the future, which I'm probably going to, I can still mount other wheels to this wheel deck without really having to change too much. So it completely depends on what kind of wheel you currently have. If you use something like a DD1, there are specific designs that mount that DD1 to the frame. But again, depending on what you have, we'll decide what layout you want to go for. Now that you know what a TR160 is, let me run you through some of the things that have kind of annoyed me in the last couple of weeks that I may not have really thought about before getting the cockpit. So like I mentioned before, this is an aluminum profile cockpit, which means it's totally customizable. You can change as much as you want. You can make major tweaks, minor tweaks. It can be exactly as you want it. Now the cockpit that I was using before this was actually a GT track by Next Level Racing. Now with that cockpit, it's kind of easy to make really minor tweaks but it's all within limitations of what Next Level want you to be able to do with that cockpit. With this Track Racer TR160, I can do whatever I want. I can make as many changes as I want, as little changes as I want, and once it's set up, it's set up and I haven't really got to touch it again. One of the big things that I do have a problem with is when I want to make minor adjustments, especially in that initial setup stage, it's quite frustrating to move things only because it's such a bulky design and it's designed to be done up you will never have to touch it again so let's say for example with the cockpit that i was using previously if i wanted to lift up the height of the wheel it was literally as simple as undoing two bolts lifting up the wheel deck and then retightening the bolts however it could only raise at the angle that they wanted it raised at whereas with the tr160 if i want to raise the wheel deck i have to undo four bolts lift up the whole wheel deck itself and then retighten four bolts I understand that might not seem as much, two bolts to four bolts, 
totally understand it. If I want to slide the whole wheel deck closer to me, I have to undo 16 bolts on my left side and eight bolts on my right side and then move four different components all as one, which is very, very difficult to do by yourself, especially if you only want to move it a centimeter, two centimeters, things like that. But once you have it fine-tuned to what you want, you tighten all those bolts, it's not going anywhere. Nothing you really throw at this thing is ever going to change the way that it is. Now, I know you guys are going to be like, that's not really a dislike, which you're pretty correct in. It is a minor inconvenience, but definitely nothing that's going to deter you from buying a rig like this. That is going to happen with any aluminium profile cockpit, regardless of whether it's track racers or somebody else's it's just a reality of having an aluminium profile cockpit but as i said once you've fixed all those little things and got it exactly where you want it it's not going anywhere. Now, before I got this rig, I did have a look online to see what other people's experiences were like getting the rig, putting the rig together, using the rig for a while, just to see what other people's opinions were. Now, the most repetitive thing that I saw was people complaining about not having enough parts in the box, instructions not being very clear, very difficult to put together, the general things. And I have to say, after picking up this cockpit and putting the nine boxes in the back of my car ready to bring home and put together, every single part was there, every single bolt, nut, screw, anything that I needed was already there in the box. I actually had some spares as well. I probably got about 15 track racer stickers, which is definitely going to come in handy in the near future. And every single piece was so meticulously wrapped that I imagine sending this halfway across the world isn't really going to cause any damage or any problems to those parts themselves. In saying that, when I did take these parts out of the box ready to lay everything out and work out how the hell I was going to put this thing together, there was one piece of aluminium profile right near where it was cut that has a slight burring to it. Not that big of a deal. It's not the actual aluminium itself. It's obviously something's happened with one of the tools or in the process of getting these cut and machined that there's a little bit of damage on one of the corners of the profile. Not that big of a deal. It was very easily hidden by putting that piece on the inside underneath the seat. So no one's ever gonna see it, but there was one tiny, tiny little nick. So when you do take the pieces out of the box, just have a bit of a look. But overall, all the pieces were in really good condition and there's nothing that I can really whinge about. As far as putting the rig together, now I was really surprised to see how detailed the instructions were on the Track Racer cockpit, especially after reading things online about people complaining that it wasn't very clear or it was hard to understand. I thought the instructions were really, really well put together. It did take a little bit longer than I thought, but I don't know if Track Racer have changed the instructions anytime recently to make it a little bit easier to understand. Now it is suggested that you use two people to put this rig together. You probably can do it by yourself, but it's much easier to do it with somebody else to help you and hold pieces up and just get everything lined up and done with two people is a hell of a lot easier than it would be with one. But one thing that does actually come with this cockpit that Track Racer don't actually tell you about is a real test of the relationship with whoever you are building it with. Now I'm very fortunate that my partner sacrificed her day to help me build this rig. And I'm very, very lucky that we have a fantastic relationship because I could imagine if it wasn't as good as it is, there would be problems. <laughs> Building this rig took us so much longer than I thought. I don't know what the hell I was thinking that I could smash it out in two hours. Absolutely not. This took me the better part of a day and a half, only because we had to stop, do other things. But I think if you started early in the morning, you'd have it finished by dinner time. You'd be ready for dinner, a well-deserved dinner, but you'd be ready for tea. <laughs> Obviously, you could get this cockpit put together a hell of a lot faster, but taking your time, making mistakes, uh, like myself, putting parts on backwards, just dumb stuff, my fault, but it does take a little bit longer than you're expecting. But like I said before, once it's all put together, it's all ready to go, you've done everything up, it's gonna last you forever. And that perfectly leads us into one of the things that I absolutely love about this cockpit, which is the quality. So when I finished putting this rig together, before I put the wheel or the pedals or the shifters or anything on the rig itself, I actually stood on the top of the uprights for the wheel deck to clean something on the ceiling. I didn't even really think about it. I was pretty delirious at this point after spending eight hours building a rig, but I literally had all of my weight on those uprights, which like I said, I'm a big guy and that impresses the hell out of me. I genuinely cannot imagine putting any sort of wheelbase on this that the rig won't be able to handle. Unless they come up with a wheelbase in the future that has about 250 Newton meters of torque that will yeet you across the room. I don't imagine anything really being too much for this. The same thing goes for the pedal deck. When I was putting this pedal deck together, just lifting up that top part to put on top of the pedal deck itself, it's heavy. It's very heavy duty. I currently use the Fanatec V3 Club Sport pedals, which are obviously a brake cell pedal. I have them with the brake performance kit, so they're super, super tight, really hard to press down on that brake pedal, and it's not going anywhere. Again, I don't think there's genuinely a set of brakes that I could purchase and use that would do any damage to this rig. It's super, super sturdy, has a really, really nice finish on it, and the overall quality is just 
impeccable. So like I said before, the seat that I got was the rally style seat. It's a little bit wider at the base, so people my size are quite comfortable in it, which is great. I'm always really nervous about buying office chairs or any sort of chair like this, especially a sim racing seat, because without trying it first, you have no idea how comfortable it is, especially when you're my size. The first time I tried this seat, it was already bolted to the rig. It was already ready to go. So it's one of those too late now sort of situations, but I have literally used this rig every single day since I put it together and I've never been uncomfortable. Every single one of our streams has been done from this rig, which is twitch.tv forward slash the game department if you haven't already checked that out. But every stream is about four hours long. I normally finish the streams, go downstairs to have some dinner, come back up and I'm back in the rig for another three hours. There is nothing about this that makes me uncomfortable. I don't feel squished and I don't feel like I've got to get up every hour to let blood flow back into my legs like I've had with other rigs. But overall, the quality of the rig itself is fantastic. Now, one of the last things that I want to talk about before I make this a 45 minute video is the ability to add things. Now, I'm sure you could probably tell in the B-roll shots that you would have seen at the start of the video is I have a keyboard tray attached to the rig off to my right hand side that keeps everything super, super neat without having to worry about wires overlapping things and being in the way. So the keyboard tray I actually got from Track Racer's website, they have a bunch of different 8020 accessories there, which you can use on the TR80 or the TR160 because they're both aluminum profile cockpits. And I guess that really falls into the last thing that I want to talk about is the ability to make every single rig your own. I can make this completely different to the way anyone else is ever going to have their own rig. If I want to put a button box on my left and a keyboard to my right or a keyboard underneath my wheel or a keyboard pretty much attached to the floor, but still to next to the seat, I can do whatever I want. And there's no limitations to that. Obviously, if you can find the accessories, you can use them. And you can get a bunch of different third party accessories for aluminum profile cockpits. Obviously, Track Racer have a bunch of universal accessories as well on their website, but there's so many things that you can get and attach to these aluminum profile cockpits, which you can completely make your own. And it gives you a never ending shopping list of things you have to stop yourself from impulsively buying. It's a win-win. <laughs> but to recap, if you are looking at upgrading your sim rig to go for something like the TR160 or an aluminum profile rig, or if you're looking to get your very first rig and you wanna spend a little bit of money to make sure it's gonna last you forever, I definitely suggest going for the TR160. I genuinely cannot see myself ever really needing to upgrade from this rig to get anything else. If I wanna add motion platforms to this, I can. If I wanna add a butt kicker to every single corner of the rig, I can do that. If I wanna add 7.1 surround sound speakers, I can do that as well. There's literally no limitation of things that you can do to this. Unless Track Racer come out with this $25,000 amazing sim rig that is gonna revolutionize the way sim racing is looked at as a whole, and they send it to me for free, then maybe. But other than that, I'm never gonna need to change from this rig in my life. If you have any questions on this rig or you wanna ask me live, we stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv forward slash the game department. Come to the stream, let me know you found this video and hit me with any questions you may have and I'll do my best to help you. If you wanna come and join us on any of our social media or leave all the links to everything in the description below, come say hello. We have a great community of people you definitely want to be a part of it. Other than that, I'm going to leave you guys to it. I hope you had a good morning. I hope you have a good night. Bye.